This morning, our speaker, I think of words like energy, vitality, purpose, vision, excitement, longevity, and love. And in all of that, all of these words, to my mind, are vague descriptions of Reverend Dr. Sonia Davidson and the work that she does for this community. Please put your hands together and welcome. Thank you, Sandy. Good morning, good morning, everyone. And I want to welcome you to this Friendship Sunday. Not only us who are here, but those on the World Wide Web. Should I bring this down? I think, yes. It's so wonderful. Believe you me, my heart is just bubbling with love. Bubbling with love for my church community. Bubbling it with love for the world and for everyone in my life, my family, everyone. And it's just bubbling with love for everything and everyone. So my topic this morning might intrigue you, but at the end of it, I expect you to have some clarity. My topic, I do not have to like you, to love you, but I do. Yeah. Milestones remind me how fortunate I am in love and in loving. 2020, year of plenty, is filled with plenty of milestones for me. Tomorrow, I think, or Tuesday, tomorrow, I will mark 10 years since I became a grandmother. In less than four weeks, I will celebrate 75 years in this incarnation. April of this year, I will mark 50 years as a doctor. And in November, I will mark 50 years when I first became a mother. There are many more, but these are the ones that really stand out this year. Hey, kind of, I wait for 60. It's just 53 this time. OK. <laughs> These nine stones have afforded me the opportunities to interact with people of every variety. I have learned much about love from them, but also about what others have written about love. I have studied the theories of love, and I have researched the biology of love. But it is through loving that I have learned the most. Of all that I have discovered along the way, the most liberating is that to truly love another, I must grow out of a need to be acknowledged by those with whom I share my love. I have become secure in my realization of the presence of God in, through, and as me, and also in, through, and as all others. I celebrate the beauty, majesty, and power of God's presence everywhere and wait its revelation to me. Each morning, I direct my attention in gratitude to the privilege of being the unique expression of God's beautiful presence, living itself as me. My mantra, I am the point where God appears. I am the point where God appears. You may like this affirmation by Catherine Ponder also. I walk in the charmed circle of God's love. I am divinely irresistible to my highest good. And I want you to say it with me. I, I, I walk, after me, I walk in the charmed circle of God's love. I walk in the charmed circle of God's love. I am divinely irresistible to my highest good. I am divinely irresistible to my highest good. 
Dr. Ernest Holmes in the Practitioner Handbook says, when we are spiritually awake, we don't need someone saying they love us or are proud of us. It is the love of spirit, the originating love out of which everything is born that is of any importance. This is God, he says, our true nature and the nature of all people. To quote also a Eugene Sorensen, not only we love enough in a sense of unity with life and people and God, not until we love enough in a sense of unity with life and people and God do we find the real answer we can to life. The biblical words recorded in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33 spoken to the Jews but equally applicable to each and every person. I will put my law within them and will write it on their hearts. No matter how much study is made by scientists about love, it is in the act of loving that we discover love and it is in the discovery of love that we find ourselves. We cannot help but pursue the expression of love. It is our nature to love. It is a law. It is the law. I will put my law within them and will write it on their hearts. We cannot help, yes, but pursue the expression of love. Yes, we cannot. We are always loving something and we all have a need to love someone and a longing to be loved, which is the catalyst for us to reach deep within and discover the true self. Love is who we are. It is an absolute necessity to allow it to express. To repress it is to deny its expression, and to deny its expression is like holding one's breath because we want to save the air for ourselves. Love is a necessity. Love is inevitable. It will be expressed no matter what. It is the flow of life upon itself. It is God admiring itself. Sorensen again. As we seek a deeper experience in knowing people, which only love can bring, we will find a closeness to them and a preciousness of life that God has always intended for us. Give love a chance. Let us start right away, right now. I want you to look across the room and lock eyes with somebody that you have not had a direct conversation with recently or maybe ever. Look them directly in the eyes. I hope you can see farther than I can. <laughs> and say to them, I see you. I see God, I love you, come. I see you, I see God, I see love, love you. I see you, I see God, I love you. And after the service, you will find someone that you have not spoken to for a while, find them, Go up to them, and if you can remember it, I, no man can remember, I see you, I see God, I see love, I love you. That was easy, wasn't it? Wouldn't it be lovely if life and loving was always that easy? Life is a work in progress for most of us. It, has, it is an evolution into love. Over time, I have learned to enjoy loving the previously seeming unlovable, who I now call the eccentrics, because I can now see clearly that they are merely extending an open invitation to me to see God face to face. The game of life I play with myself is to approach life with the intention that whoever I meet, wherever I look, I look for some quality or qualities that I admire or expect to enjoy, and I know that it will be revealed to me in everyone I encounter. 
I deliberately practice this in the encounters that are most challenging to me. In the end, these are the most rewarding. That everyone at some time or other has committed acts which may be judged as unworthy or socially unacceptable or even irritating is a fact. Arguably, the most beloved man in history, Jesus the Master, by today's standards would have been judged as behaving quite badly on at least two occasions that I can recall. I can just imagine someone calling the police or mental health officers to him. Should, out of our, for example, out of our premises, should he show up at our church bazaar or bake sale and create such a scene as he was reported to have caused when he went into the synagogue and disturbed the sale that was taking place. If one should judge him again by societal standards, even for the day in which he lived, on more than one occasion he appeared to demonstrate a kind of indifference to his family's concern when he said, who is my mother, right? When he was asked about that his mother had come to visit him. Yet, this same Jesus, demonstrated above all others compassion, such dedication to alleviating human suffering wherever he went, such embrace of people of lowly status, such caring for all. He was the embodiment of love. I'm remembering one man in particular who has become my teacher. He operates at the traffic light in Ligony. He had tested my patience and evoked some not too comfortable emotional responses for months. But as my mother used to say, I just bide my time. Bide your time means be patient. All things will come to an end, it will work out. Bide your time. Now this man, whose occupation is begging, who is regular at the Ligony traffic light, comes up to the car with a confidence and taps on the window of the car very loudly. If he's ignored, he repeats the tap even more loudly until I look at him. By this time, I'm annoyed and I wave him off. He ignores my brush off and now presses his lips on the glass of the window, declaring in a loud and demanding voice that I give him a grant. Whatever that is, a grand is what, $1,000? Okay, good. This scenario has played itself out so often in exactly the same way until recently I noticed that I was beginning to admire his confidence, <laughs> his persistence, his refusal to take no for an answer. It occurred to me that that is exactly how we should approach the Father, which is in heaven, within, and I now have begun to see him differently. I no longer look away. I look directly at him and imagine what power and fortitude. I'm now saving a big bag of coins to give him. <laughs> Curious to see what he will do with it. He no longer has the power to annoy me because I'm seeing the real man. I love what I'm seeing, although I did not and do not like his behavior. But now I am seeing it differently. So I have freed myself from my self-imposed irritation. I see him as a man at work, enthusiastically, energetically, pursuing his occupation. I see God in action. He hasn't changed his behavior, but I have changed how I experience him. Who knows? He may just change his behavior. But that is no longer a must for me. So friends, if there's a relationship or encounter which evokes, or which evokes uncomfortable responses in you and in me, I will do the work and bide my time. The work is mine to see differently. I am stepping out each day with the belief in the omnipresence of the divine and the potential of all people to relieve it and for me to evoke it. I intend to meet God in all people. Meanwhile, I remain devoted in my spiritual practice and expect to enjoy the people I interact with. B-I-D-E. Believe, intend, devote my time to spiritual practice and enjoy people. 
PID, believe, intend, devote my time, and enjoy people. I believe that a closer relationship with the divine is my key to peaceful and joyous relationships, and that is where I put my trust. Quiet time, meditation, reflection, study, affirmative prayer, an affirmative state of mind, collective spiritual practice, continual, relentless spiritual practice is a discipline which is joyful and which becomes with practice as natural as, and as necessary as bathing. As I grow more in love, I'm looking forward to relieving, revealing more of what I am. Love in action is patience, kindness, generosity, courtesy, humility, unselfishness, and sincerity. These I expect to grow as I sink my spiritual roots deeper and deeper into the spiritual awakening. I do not expect these qualities to equally fully develop overnight, but I am committed to consistent practice of the tools of our teaching. Meditation, practicing the stillness, again, affirmative prayer, mental fasting from negativity and affirmative thinking are the hallmarks of the science of mind thinking. One of our congregants shared a milestone for her along this spiritual path. The experience she shared with me has similarities to my story, but the outcome is somewhat different. This lady lives in an upscale, quiet, and fairly secluded residential area. The house next door acquired new occupants. They were loud and unfriendly, her description. She decided to be more regular with her meditation. She included frequent affirmations of peace for herself and Jamaica. In no time at all, the noise disappeared and the new occupants have become the best of neighbors. Not a word spoken or exchange was made. She just shifted her attention towards peace and away from the noise. Whoosh, the noise has disappeared. And love and friendship has replaced it. When we say we love someone, what we are loving are the things about them that we value. We are actually seeing ourselves through them, how we are and how we would like to be. What we dislike about others is often pointing out to us where we need to work on in ourselves to develop the attributes which neutralize and convert those things that we do not like to the things that we like. Remember love, tolerance, compassion, empathy, connection, friendliness. We do need to like, we do not need to like another's behavior to accept that beneath that seeming undesirable behavior is a person trying to do the best they know how in that moment, making an unspoken cry for help or understanding. I believe in the unity of all life. God is all, and all is God. That is my evolution in loving. I believe, I truly believe, that my understanding of the nature of God is my interpretation of godness and goodness. There is goodness in all people. It is not their obligation to demonstrate it to me. It is my responsibility to discover it. I do not need to like or admire everything about people to love them. When I have loved them enough, I will discover so much about them that I like because they will reveal their true self to me. I will come to realize that each person is trying to get by. Love has x-ray eyes that penetrate the surface to people's intentions. It understands that love has no motive but good, no intention but happiness. Because I have accepted that everyone is of one source, 
then I must be, I must be connected to all people in some special ways. There are no strangers, even if I have never met them. They are all, and we are all connected, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We live in a global system which is so connected that what happens anywhere affects the climate everywhere. Diseases originating anywhere can be transported anywhere and everywhere. The suffering of peoples or the rejoicing of others separated by thousands of miles affect others. Why we are a part of an in, in, why we are part of an invisible mesh of spiritual connectedness called life. We are one. This is the truth by which I seek to live my life and approach all my relationships. I wish all people well and feel a deep connection to their joy and empathize with their pain. I said empathize, not sympathize. I care that they are in pain and I feel a thrill when I witness their joy. When they are in pain, I do not suffer with them because I know that suffering is unnecessary and my suffering would be unhelpful. I care enough to pause and remember that the source from which they came and from which they have never departed and can never depart is all power and wisdom. Yes, I am impelled to offer a helping hand, and I do, but I know that the great and more lasting gift is to be able to see the facts, yet know the truth. The know the truth, perfect God, perfect man, perfect expression. The truth, the truth that I must do and hold fast to at all times. There is one absolute and self-existent cause which reveals itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. Declaration of principle, science of mind. It is important not only to be, not only to our personal well-being, but also for that of those who are part of our family and our social circles, to include, and that includes our church family, that we participate in a consciousness that leans heavily on our belief that all are God in expression, that we are each where the good goodness of the one appears, so that we do not become infected by a belief that things are going from bad to worse in our country, in our lives, and in our world. We have been privileged to be exposed to the blessings of our teaching. If we do not heed, who will? I acknowledge that a desire for personal spiritual growth is admirable, but as we grow, it is inevitable that we will desire that our brothers and sisters come along with us also. To change any perception of brokenness of our world, we ourselves must persevere in knowing the truth. The perfection of God lives within, beneath, around, and everywhere. An early New Thought luminary, Annie Besant, in her book, Thought Power, challenges us to join with the individuals who are committed to actively participating in elevating world consciousness. She said, whatever a good and pure intelligence sets itself to work to aid the world in diffusing through it noble and lofty thoughts, their definite service is done to man. And the lonely thinker becomes one of the lifters of the world. But first, she says, we are to learn to develop and then use our developed thought power to quicken human evolution and to hasten our own progress. Thought power can only be increased by steady and persistent exercise, as literally and as truly as muscular development depends on the exercise of the muscles we already possess. So does mental development depend on the exercise of the mind already ours." End of quote. So friends, let us commit this affirmation that I'm sharing with you to use to prime our spiritual pump and bless the human race. We're going to use it now, but I'm inviting you to, to devise your own affirmation and know that as you speak it and it flows through you, even as you are blessed and lifted up, you are blessing all others too. So I'm going to read it first. I am endowed with unlimited capacity to love. Through me, God loves. 
I am the instrument through which life flows. So, I am endowed with unlimited capacity to love. I am endowed with unlimited capacity to love. Through me, God loves. Through me, God loves. I am the instrument through which life flows. I am the instrument through which life flows. Friends, we, you, are all of us are the instruments through which life flows. Namaste.